Hey everyone, I'm Patty Capkai. This video is all about taking a monster from Yuletide tradition and turning it into a Dungeons and Dragons antagonist. Today we're talking about Krampus. Krampus hails from Slavic and Austrian Yuletide celebrations. The creature was originally depicted as a sort of anti-Saint Nicholas, a representation of all things opposed to the beloved Catholic saint that inspired the tradition of Santa Claus. While exact descriptions of the monster vary, a few things are agreed upon. The creature is demonic, has animal horns, and always carries a birch switch with which it beats misbehaving children. While good children are given gifts during the month of December, naughty children are visited by Krampus to be disciplined, and the worst behaved children become its true victims. Krampus is known to collect the most naughty children and devour them. At its roots, it is a scary story to get children to behave, and it makes for a wonderful Dungeons and Dragons antagonist. Krampus abides certain rules, and he only targets children deemed naughty enough to deserve his wrath. However, naughtiness can be relative. For sake of depth, Krampus is driven by an intense hunger for corrupted souls, especially those of children. His goal will be to collect as many souls as possible, and he only has a small window of about 25 days to accomplish this. As such, he's an ideal antagonist for a D&D one-shot, or even a shorter campaign of just a few sessions, or even a subplot of a larger campaign, however you prefer to work him into your game. Krampus will act aggressively, and more like a beast than a humanoid. The choices Krampus makes revolve around his goal, collect corrupted souls, especially children, to be devoured. As such, it will stalk villages and roads, looking out for people and children who are misbehaving. Player alignment can come into play here. If you have players that are more good aligned, they might be able to have more friendly interactions with Krampus. Any evil aligned players, or even just more mischievous players, may be subject to Krampus's bloodlust. If you have a player who likes to steal, or heaven forbid, a murder hobo player, then it makes sense that they could be targeted by Krampus specifically. Krampus can speak, and keep in mind he will address players differently depending on whether or not they've been naughty or nice. You can decide what constitutes a corrupted soul, and the more vague the better. Remember, Krampus is out to get as many souls as possible, so he will not be picky in who he considers bad. There are other stat blocks out there. I mostly combined my favorite parts of a few of them and added my own ideas. He's a medium fiend, a devil specifically, and his alignment is lawful evil. His primary ability scores are dexterity and charisma because he needs to be nimble and he has some spellcasting that uses charisma. He is skilled with insight and perception because he has a knack for telling when people, especially children, have been naughty. He is stealthy so he can snatch up children and anyone else who gets in his way. Krampus' true sight enables him to see people as they are, including their souls. I feel like most of the spells are self-explanatory. Detect good and evil tracks with his goal to find corrupt souls to devour. Hold a monster in sleep help with his method of stuffing people into his sack, and invisibility enables him to stalk prey easily. His magic resistance and magic weapon make him more challenging as a foe. Players will need to be prepared if they hope to fight him successfully. His actions come from his renowned behavior of smacking bad children around with a switch and kidnapping more naughty children by stuffing them in his sack. In combat, all creatures fighting him are considered bad, and thus become souls that Krampus will want to devour. In combat, Krampus will go after more chaotic or evil-aligned characters first. Krampus is hungry, and he may attempt to devour a soul in combat if he gets the chance. This would probably happen if a creature's health points drop to zero, it would constitute Krampus' entire action for that turn. Now, gauge with your players the amount of gore that might be appropriate to use to depict this horrific moment. Krampus will not fight to the death unless it is truly cornered. A good rule of thumb is that he will try to flee when he drops to about a third of his hit points. And finally, Krampus will always try to grab a creature and stuff it in his sack. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and subscribe to Panic Cat Guy for more D&D content.